Hi, this is Tom from ZeroDefinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through audiometry. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroDefinals.com slash audiometry or in the ear, nose and throat section of the Zero Definals surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Audiometry involves objectively testing a patient's hearing by playing a variety of tones and volumes. Air conduction is tested by using headphones and bone conduction is tested using a device called an oscillator that delivers sounds directly to the bones of the skull. Audiometry results are recorded on an audiogram. Audiograms can help identify and differentiate between conductive and sensory neural hearing loss and we're going to talk in more detail about how this is done. Let's talk about audiograms. Audiograms are charts that document the volume at which patients can hear different tones. The tone is measured as frequency in hertz, which is plotted on the x-axis from low to high pitched. The volume is measured in decibels, which is plotted on the y-axis from loud at the bottom to quiet at the top. The lower down the chart, the higher the decibels and the louder the volume. The higher up the y-axis, the more sensitive the patient's hearing is. Hearing is tested to establish the quietest volume at which a patient can hear each frequency. This level is plotted on the chart. The louder the sound required for the patient to hear, the worse their hearing is and the lower on the chart they will plot. For example, a thousand hertz sound will be played at various volumes until the patient can just about hear the sound. If this tone is heard at 15 decibels, a mark is made on the chart where a thousand hertz meets 15 decibels. If this sound can only be heard at 80 decibels, a mark is made where a thousand hertz meets 80 decibels. Hearing is tested in both ears separately. Both air and bone conduction are tested independently. The following symbols are used to mark each of these separate measurements. X is used to mark the left-sided air conduction. A square-shaped close bracket is used to mark left-sided bone conduction. An O is used to mark right-sided air conduction and a square-shaped open bracket symbol is used to mark right-sided bone conduction. When a patient has normal hearing, all readings will be between 0 and 20 decibels at the top of the chart. In patients with sensory neural hearing loss, both the air and bone conduction readings will be more than 20 decibels, plotted below the 20 decibel line on the chart. This may affect only one side, one side more than the other, or both sides equally. In patients with conductive hearing loss, bone conduction readings will be normal, between 0 and 20 decibels. However, air conduction readings will be greater than 20 decibels, plotted below the 20 decibel line on the chart. In conductive hearing loss, sound can travel through the bone, but is not conducted through air due to pathology along the route into the ear. Both air and bone conduction readings will be more than 20 decibels in patients with mixed hearing loss. However, there will be a difference of more than 15 decibels between the two, with bone conduction better than air conduction, plotted slightly higher on the chart. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, left a comment or subscribe to the channel, thank you so much, it really helps. Zero to Finals is not just a YouTube channel, there's also a website with detailed notes, illustrations and questions, an Instagram account where new questions are posted every day to help you test your knowledge, books, flashcards and much more. I also have a personal channel where I share my thoughts and tips on learning medicine, and you can find links to everything in the description of this video. See you next time.